The year was 1957. The US and the Soviet Union were locked in a space race. Space was an alluring yet dangerous frontier and the technology was in its early stages. It was risky to directly send a human to space without knowing the consequences of such a mission. So engineers viewed flights by animals as a necessary precursor to human missions. One of the animals who was sent to space was a female dog named Laika. She wasn't the first one to be launched in space, but she was the first one to be sent knowing that she will not make it back alive. This is her story. After the success of Sputnik 1, Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviet leader, wanted to achieve more ambitious goals and stun the world with Soviet prowess. Originally, the Soviets were planning to launch Sputnik 2 in December, but Khrushchev wanted the launch to coincide with the 40th anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution. The rocket engineers had to expedite the flight to launch on 7th November. Laika was a mixed breed dog of about two years. She was one of a number of stray dogs that were taken into the Soviet space flight program after being rescued from the streets. Only female dogs were used because they were considered to be anatomically better suited than males for close confinement. Three dogs were shortlisted for this mission, Albina, Mushka and Laika. Doctors performed surgery on both Laika and Albina, embedding medical devices in their bodies to monitor heart impulses, breathing rates, blood pressure, and physical movement. But in the end, Laika was chosen because she showed better aptitude during preliminary tests. Rumors emerged that Albina had outperformed Laika. But because she had recently given birth to puppies, and also because she had apparently won the affection of her keepers, Albina did not face the fatal flight. Laika trained for a life on board the satellite by learning to accept progressively smaller living spaces. For this, the size of her cage was reduced over a period of 20 days. She was also spun in a centrifuge to accustom her to changes in gravitation. And she learned to accept food in a jellied form that could be easily served in an environment of weightlessness. The scientists were well aware that this was a one-way trip and she would not be making it back alive. Originally, the plan was to euthanize Laika with a poison serving of food and letting her die painlessly in sleep from oxygen deprivation. One of her keepers, Vladimir Yazdowski, took three-year-old Laika to his home to play with his children shortly before the flight because he wanted to do something nice for the dog. On November 3rd at 5.30 am, the ship lifted off with G-forces reaching five times normal gravity levels. At peak acceleration, Laika's respiration increased to between 3 and 4 times the pre-launch rate. After 3 hours of weightlessness, Laika's pulse rate had settled back to 102 beats per minute. This took 3 times longer than it had taken during earlier ground tests, an indication of the stress she was under. The early telemetry indicated that Laika was agitated but eating her food. During the first orbit, a failure in the separation stage of Sputnik 2 tore off the thermal insulation, which raised the cabin temperature well above normal levels. After approximately 5 to 7 hours in the flight, no further signs of life were received from the spacecraft. Laika had died from overheating and dehydration in just a few hours. Originally, the scientists had hoped that Laika would stay alive for 8 to 10 days. Sputnik 2 remained in orbit for 5 months with Laika inside then plunged into the atmosphere and burned up over the Caribbean. A space coffin turned shooting star. During and after the flight, the Soviet Union kept up the fiction that Laika survived for several days. The official documents were also falsified. Soviet broadcasts claimed that Laika was alive until November 12. Apparently, the Soviet scientists had insufficient time to perfect life support systems because of the rushed launch. The mission sparked a debate across the world over ethical treatment of animals. There were demonstrations and protests in different parts of the world. Some of them were staged outside Soviet embassies and the UN headquarters in New York. In 1998, after the collapse of the Soviet regime, Oleg Gazenko, one of the scientists responsible for sending Laika into space, expressed regret for allowing her to die. He stated, Work with animals is a source of suffering for all of us. 
We treat them like babies who cannot speak. The more time passes, the more sorry I am about it. We shouldn't have done it. We did not learn enough from this mission to justify the death of the dog. While Laika would not have chosen the path if she could communicate, the humans are indebted to her for leading the way. Ironically, a flight that promised Laika certain death also offered proof that space was livable. Thank you for watching. If you found the video interesting, hit the like button and consider subscribing to Seanvolution for more such content.